Good morning everybody, I'm back today and we are going to look at Grade 8, Term 1, Unit 1, Technology. Let's do a quick introduction to frame structures. Shell structures, frame structures and solid structures are all built for a specific purpose. Structures must be able to support a load without breaking. They must also be strong enough to support their own weight. Some structures span across a distance, for example a bridge. Other structures hold objects and keep them safe. Structures can be natural or human-made. Define frame structures. A frame structure is made up of different bars. These bars are joined together to form a framework. The bars make the framework stronger. Frame structures are fairly easy to design. They can also be manufactured cheaply and they can be constructed quickly. They are often used in the construction industry. Here's our first keyword. Now keywords are important because they are almost always asked in tests to define words wherever you see define something they're talking about a keyword and here we have frame structure rigid parts are joined together to form a frame structure the different parts are called members frame structures support a load or span a gap Purpose of structural members, components in wood and steel roof trusses. The framework for the roofs of most houses and buildings is made from either wood or steel. These frameworks are called roof trusses. Roof trusses support the weight of the roof timbers and roof coverings. The number of trusses that are used depends on the size of the structure. Larger structures will need more trusses. Keyword Roof Truss A framework used for the roof construction of most houses and buildings. It is a base that supports the roof timbers and roof coverings. These figures show different roof trusses acting as a supporting base. The members or components of a roof truss are nailed, bolted or pegged together to form a strong triangular shape. The structural members of roof trusses have different names. They are called king posts, queen posts, struts, ties, rafters and tie beams. King posts and queen posts. The most common type of roof truss has a king post. A king post roof truss has a supporting beam attached to the center of a tie beam. The king post extends towards the top of the roof truss. Next keyword is king post. The most commonly used type of roof truss. It is a supporting beam that is attached to the center of a tie beam. It extends towards the top of the roof truss framework. Queen post. A queen post roof truss has two supporting beams placed on a tie beam. This figure shows how the vertical beams are evenly spaced apart. The queen posts are connected at the top by a diagonal collar beam. 
A queen post roof truss can span longer distances than a king post roof truss. This means that larger structures can be built. Struts A strut holds members of a framework in place by pushing against them. A strut must be strong enough to keep apart the two components that are pushing against it. So a strut performs the opposite function of a tie. A strut is under a compression force. Placing a strut across a joint can make a framework stronger. Keyword strut, a strong member that forms part of a frame structure. It can resist a compression force. This figure shows how a strut is used to strengthen an aeroplane's landing gear. The weight of the aeroplane presses down on the earth. An opposing force pushes the weight back. This creates a compression force on the landing gear. A strut is used to prevent the landing gear from snapping. Ties. A tie holds or pulls two members of a framework together. A tie must be strong enough to hold together structural members that are pulling away from one another. A framework can be made stronger by joining the members with a tie. The two members each pull the tie towards themselves. So a tie is under a tension force. This causes the tie to appear as if it is being stretched in two directions. Our keyword is tie. The two members each pull the tie towards themselves. So a tie is under a tension force. This causes the tie to appear as if it is being stretched in two directions. This figure shows a horizontal shelf that is joined to a wall. A television rests on the shelf. Yes, I know that's a very old television. The television's weight forces the shelf downwards. To stabilize the shelf, a tie or diagonal member is attached to the shelf and the wall. The weight of the television forces the shelf to pull away from the wall. This creates a tension force on the tie. Rafters a rafter is one beam in a series of parallel beams. These beams are attached to the frames of a roof truss. Rafters help to shape the roof and they also help to support the roof covering. This figure shows rafters in wood roof trusses. You can see that the rafters are arranged in a specific way to help form a roof structure's shape. Keyword rafter. A series of parallel beams that are attached to a roof truss framework. They help to shape the roof and support the roof covering. And the last thing we are talking about is tie beams. A tie beam is a horizontal beam that rests on two opposite columns. It joins the two diagonal sides of a triangular structure. You can clearly see this in the figure at the top. A tie beam usually connects two opposite rafters to form a roof truss. The figure at the bottom shows different types of tie beams. The tie beam in each picture is shown by a yellow line. 
Yes, you are right. Our last keyword is tie beam. A beam that connects two opposite rafters to form a roof truss. A tie beam rests on two opposite columns. And that is our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and most importantly learning. This is MK's class signing out.